Hi guys. In this section, we'll talk about factoring polynomials. Uh, learning objectives are fairly straightforward, just what we discussed. So let's get started. Here is a decision tree that I use uh, whenever I'm running into factoring questions. So anytime I'm given a factoring question, first thing I always ask myself is, is there a GCF? If there is a GCF, I should factor it out. This is the first thing you want to do. You never want to have to remember uh, at the end of the problem, hey, did I factor out my GCF? So if you get it out of the way, it will reduce the complexity of the problem. It will just make things a lot better all around. Once you factored out the GCF, you ask yourself, well, how many terms do I have left? So after the GCF, if you still have two terms left, then you want to go down this path and you want to uh, check to see if any of these four formulas apply. On the other hand, if you have three terms, then you try to see if one of these two formulas apply or there's another decision tree down here. With four terms, we have either grouping or these two formulas. So let's look at this in more detail. If we have two terms, for our purposes, at, at our level, we're going to be expecting you to be considering these four formulas. There are many, many, many other ways to factor uh, binomials or, or problems that have two terms in them. For our purposes, it's just going to be restricted to these four. As you progress into future courses and you, you go along further in your mathematical journeys, there will be other things that need to be done. But for now, it, we're just limiting ourselves to these. So if you have a problem that can be rewritten as a sum of squares, or maybe it is a sum of squares already, we know that to be prime. There is no way to factor a sum of squares. It's not possible. Don't waste your time trying or, or bother attempting to do it. So the moment you can rewrite a problem as a sum of squares, question's really over. These are the ones you want to pray for. A difference of squares, on the other hand, a squared minus b squared, so some quantity squared minus some other quantity squared, can be factored into a plus b times a minus b. So you take the square root of a squared, that gives you a, you take the square root of b squared, that gives you b. One binomial with a plus, one binomial with a minus. The sum of cubes is a cubed plus b cubed. These two, uh, the sum of cubes and difference of cubes are the same formula, except you'll notice that there's some sign changes. Whatever the sign in the original problem, the same sign appears in the binomial. So if you have a cubed plus b cubed, you'll see a plus b here. If you have a cubed minus b cubed, you'll see a minus b here. A little memory trick. And again, you have a squared, a squared, a, b, a, b, b squared, b squared. However, the sign on the middle term, on the a, b term, is the opposite of the sign in the problem. So here you have a squared minus a, b plus b squared. Here you have a squared plus a, b plus b squared, because here the sign in the original problem is a difference. For now, uh, this is it for two terms. If, if any of these techniques work, great. If not, then you... Uh, well, I think I'm going to leave of what happens after for now. I'm going to go over to four terms just because that's shorter as well. If you have four terms in the problem, you want to consider grouping as a possible technique. And then if that doesn't work, or if you see the cube of sum or a cube of difference, uh, this is something we uh, sort of ended the last section on, you want to consider these as well. So in the last section, we went from right to left. We were given a plus b, the quantity cubed, and then we turned it into that. In this particular case, we're given this well, quote unquote answer, and then we're asked, where did this come from? This is quite sophisticated, so I don't know that you will necessarily get questions on it, but if you can spot it, it, it becomes very, very quick to factor these. You don't have to go to grouping. Three terms, these are probably the most commonly seen ones. If uh, you have a square of a sum or a perfect square, you want to try to factor that right away. If you have a square of difference, again, similarly, factor it right away. And then if neither of these formulas apply because it's not a perfect square, then you ask yourself, is the leading coefficient 1? If the leading coefficient is 1, then we have something called the AC method that can help us out. If the leading coefficient is not 1, then we have something called split the middle. STM stands for split the middle, which is really a hybrid of the AC method and grouping that we saw with four terms. 
So here, what you do is you, well, as the name describes, you split the middle term. So you go from three to four terms. The split comes from the AC method. And then once you've split it, you've got four terms and then you use grouping to finish the problem. So this is an overview. None of this should be a surprise. You've done this before in chapter two, I believe. This is just more uh, practice before we get into solving equations. So first thing, we start out our example with factoring out the GCF. Now here, it, it is important that you follow the order in which I've written things. The GCF stands for the greatest common factor. It is the largest, or hence the name greatest. It's the most that you can factor out of all the individual terms in the problem. So in this question, this is one term, d minus five times d plus two, because there's a product in the middle. So all of this is glued together. There's a minus, so that means, hey, end of first term, beginning of second term. The second term is d minus five times three d plus four. So all of this is being multiplied together. This is considered one term. This is all being multiplied together. This is considered one term as well. Between both of these two large terms, we see that both of them have a d minus five as a common factor. So whenever we're factoring using the GCF or if we're factoring out the GCF, the first thing you need to write is the GCF itself. So since d minus five is the GCF, that gets written first. Order matters, so please make sure you do this correctly. Immediately after you write the GCF, you open parentheses. Now, how do you know what goes inside? You divide each term by the GCF. So if I divide d minus five times d plus two by d minus five, I'm going to be left over with d plus two as the quotient. That goes here. Minus, now if we divide this term by the GCF, d minus five, d minus five times three d plus four divided by d minus five, will give us 3d plus 4. So that goes here. Now again, you might be saying, hey, I can do this faster. I don't need all these extra steps. I assure you that when we get to rational exponents, this is what is going to save your bacon. So please make sure you internalize this. GCF first, open parentheses, divide the terms by the GCF, quotients go inside the parentheses, and then close parentheses. Now this can be simplified, d plus two minus the quantity three d plus four, we can distribute the negative, and then d minus three d would give us negative two d, two minus four would give us negative two, so that goes there. And this is the answer, we factored out the GCF of these two expressions. I forgot to put a star here, but uh, maybe put a star for this uh, solution. We will come back to it at another time because this problem technically isn't finished. You can actually factor out a negative two out of these two terms as well. But for now, we were asked to just factor out the GCF. We factored out the GCF of these two terms, and then we got uh, d minus five. Later on, when the question changes to factor completely, that means you would not be allowed to leave the negative two in here. You would need to factor that out as well. For now, we're just leaving it as it is, we factored out the GCF of this expression. Later on in the course, where the question becomes, or not even later on in the course, uh, shortly later, when the question turns into factor something completely, that's where we're going to have to factor out the GCF the entire way through. For the second question, we have x minus five times two x minus three, plus the quantity x minus five times three x minus seven. So again, just like we did with the previous problem, here we see that there is a greatest common factor of x minus five because the same term is present here as well. So again, we've, we write out the GCF, we open parentheses, and then how do we know what goes inside? We divide each term by the GCF. So if I divide x minus five times two x minus three by x minus five, I'm going to be left over with two x minus three, and that goes there, plus, now, if we divide the second term by x minus five, we're going to be left over with three x minus seven, so that goes there. Now again, just like we did in the previous problem, we distributed the negative. Here, if we distribute the sum, nothing's really going to change. Two x plus three x will yield five x, and then negative three minus seven 
will yield negative 10. And this is factored. We factored out the GCF. Again, same remark as before. Here, we notice that there's a 5 that's in common as well. So later on, when the question becomes factored completely, you're going to be obligated to and required to factor out the 5 at this stage as well.